Hey, Adam. Yo. Justin. What? It's here. Here's the problem. What, I've the problem? got, you two guys are my good friends. Yeah. And I want to be able to give you both an awesome gift. Oh. Like a shirt. That's like thoughtful of you. But so. I have to spend like 20 bucks each, like 40 bucks or whatever. How would I be able to give you both a shirt for almost free? Get one of our Steal them. bundles, either the RGB bundle or our super bundle, and you can actually get any of our shirts. You get two of those for almost free. And you say almost free because they're about 25 cents each. You can't actually put zero dollars in the system. So Doug did 99% off each shirt. So you already wanted to get these fitness gains anyway. Now let's throw some shirts in there. Did you say 99% off, Adam? 99% off. Are we wow. crazy? Pretty much. Have we lost our minds? Absolutely. So here's what you do. We've gone you go to, insane. You go to mindpumpmedia. Take advantage of our craziness. Go to mindpumpmedia.com. You enroll in the RGB bundle, which includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance and MAPS Aesthetic, or you enroll in the Super Bundle, the MAPS Super Bundle, that has all of that plus MAPS Prime and MAPS Anywhere. You enroll in those, you get any of our two t-shirts that you choose for under a dollar. It's fucking amazing. Check it out. Mindpumpmedia.com. T-shirt time. T-shirt. How many, Doug? Fifteen. Fifteen reviews. Not yes. bad. Justin, sing Not the t-shirt bad. song in robot voice. T-shirts, they're for us. They're for you. Come in. <laughs> Give us a five-star review. <laughs> Give us a five-star review. God, I wish people could... <laughs> I, wish... I don't know. You know what you are? You put me on the spot. You're you're doing a robot yeah. from what we thought robots were going to sound like in the 80s. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It would have been cooler you know, if they like, turned out that way. Actual robots don't sound, are yeah. going to sound like that. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they're more like creepy now. Well, like, no, they're, like, they're more. They're hello. Siri sounds like a person now, yeah. man. I am watching you, <laughs> and you're just like, ugh. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we got 15 reviews. We're gonna give away four shirts as follows: Holly Rue, Free Willy Fitness, M. Free that Willy Monson, Rich Rivera Fitness. All of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com and include your shirt size and your shipping address. Again, just in case you forgot, if you want to leave a review and you can't figure out how to do it, you go to iTunes, you search for Mind Pump, even if you're subscribed. We pop up, click on our icon, click on reviews, leave a review. The odds that you'll win a t-shirt are incredible. They're amazing. Yeah. You just got to bring it from the heart. You, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's you almost, pay attention to those. almost a 100% chance that you'll have a chance at winning a t-shirt. We're going to be at Paleo FX in Austin. Ooh, I can't wait. That's uh, coming up. From May 19th to the 21st. Uh, it is a, it's supposed to be pretty awesome. This will be our first time going, yeah, right? It's yeah. going to be a huge convention. Smorgasbord of knowledge. Smorgasbord. Uh, smorgasbord. Is, is it smorgasbord or smorgasbord? I was talking to Mike. He's actually going to have like a little workshop going on. There's a spot in the back where he can actually go through... Uh, physical demos of kettlebell sport and the techniques and all that kind of stuff. So he'll be there. There's a lot of us. incredible speakers. Uh, ben Greenfield will be there, Rob Wolf, along with many, many others. Yeah. Um, it's like a meeting of the minds. It's supposed to be pretty awesome. Uh, everybody who's been Mike there. Mike Bledsoe will be yeah. there. We'll, yeah. Every, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be hanging out with Barbell Shrugged and the Onnit crew, I believe, between the two of them. So you'll yep. be able to find us. We'll be hanging out there. All, all We're there, what, four days, four yeah. or five days? Yeah. We're there quite some time. Now you can buy tickets at Paleo FX. That's the letter F, uh, X, dot com. If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. Hey, Justin. Yeah. Sing it. Sing it. It's the motherfucking choir. It's the motherfucking choir. Dang. That's I had good, to bring yeah. that one back from, you, from the olden days. It takes I, me back to uh, 97 right there. It gets yeah, somewhere uh, around there. So what's that song from? It's, it's Bone Thugs. The, right? Oh, wait, is it? Yeah, it's is Bone, it Bone Thugs. Th- I love yeah. Bone Thugs. I know you've said that before. You should know God that. damn it. Stupid. Bone Thugs. Why isn't anybody listening that, to them anymore? That and Boys to Men. You can, I can totally right, see you stop no, pumping music. that out of your Walkman. I never day. liked I never Skipping liked to school with your little Jansport bag. At that point, it was the way sucked up, wasn't it? The disc, the disc man, you know, that came after the Walkman. You know why I don't like big as fuck. You know why I don't like, like the disc man? Huh? Because it, it skipped, skipped all the time. Yeah. I'd rather have a, a Walkman because you could, you could, you could do crazy shit in it, and the music wouldn't sit, skip. Oh, this is perfect because uh, remember you were talking about the thirteen reasons why thing. I've actually watched. Oh, you finally watched a one. few of those episodes. Oh, yeah, crazy, huh? Yeah, so they 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 take it all to like tapes. 
And so their whole thing is to like bring it so it's hard for them to listen to. They have to go find a tape player, cassette player, and then go through this whole thing. And uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know what all the hype's about. I was really not that much. Oh, wow. How many episodes did you get into? About three. Oh, you went through three? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. At that felt it was like. It's too a teeny bopper for me. Well, yeah, it's a. I mean, it, I mean, it's about Did you high say school. Teeny bopper, dude. It was, <laughs> yeah, it's like it reminded me. Of, Get off my lawn! You know how everybody was into like werewolves and vampires and shit and teenagers. Like this is like the next thing. What's the oh, next see, I think it's better than that because that would that the whole uh, that thing was all like, lovey like, and romantic. It's like, oh, a, right. yeah. so what, what are you guys talking about? What's so the next thing? The th- you know, he's saying the thirteen reasons why. He's talking about that show. It's, oh, that it's, Netflix show. Yeah, yeah that I told you oh. is, and it kind of. You're right. It's t- it is totally high school, but. Let's be honest. The secret's out. I listen to or I watch uh, you know, sixteen and pregnant. So <laughs> yeah, I could see you getting into this. Yeah, no, it's uh, he well, always watches that. You watch catfish. What I will say, yeah. <laughs> no, what I will say is that I I haven't gotten gone back to it. I'm on probably episode 12, 10 oh, or twelve, wow. and I haven't gone back. But the reason why I haven't was I, as much as I was sucked into it. I was telling Katrina the other day um, because I binged listened or watched it right. Mm-hmm. you know, like three, four at a time, back to back. And then about the third time I did that, I was like, oh, I need a break from all the like depressing, like sad shit. You know, yeah. it's, it's the whole thing is about a, kid, a girl who commits suicide. So as as it's gripping as it is, and as much as it else around her. Yeah, sucks yeah. you in, you get like, okay, I'm over like this like negative shit. I need yeah. to watch something that's just good entertainment or action or positive or funny, anything but this. So I actually haven't watched in a few days because I actually felt myself being like, Rrr. you get sucked down. Uh, yeah. Speaking of positive, when we get sucked up. Speaking of positive <laughs> and amazing, and spit how, out. how great was the kettlebell competition this weekend? It was a really good time. It, it was did. incredible. I had such Electric. a great time. I, I, um, th- this was the first time we've ever seen, th- all of us, right? You guys have never seen a live event no. either. No, uh-uh. The community, um, very supportive. I-, I haven't been to very many events where I saw people that supportive. Like yeah. first and second place, high-fiving each other. I know. You know, I thought for sure. At the, one of the events was very competitive. I think it was the men's long cycle. Very, very competitive. And what they, they use a, uh, what did they call it? What is the number they use? It is a come on math guys a number yeah the coefficient <laughs> oh like, they use a coefficient to figure out who wins because some guys are heavier than others I and like the sound effect they're using so different go different direction. you know weighted kettlebells or whatever and the coefficient um, you don't necess- so you could have done more reps than the next guy yeah. but because you're heavier or because you're using letter you know kettlebell or whatever it doesn't give you the same score and so it was super close first and second place and I'm like oh man these guys are gonna maybe. Is coefficient the term that they use? Yeah, they, it's, the, it's called the coefficient. Oh, yeah. it's like a handicap in golf. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. And uh, no, man, they were high-fiving each other. The The crowd was super supportive. It was a great event. I think well, we Well, I mean, it was very inclusive kind of a sport, you know, where like you saw little kids even getting involved, you know, both genders. Like it's just like anybody, like old, young, like it, it just feels like there's – everybody's just like super positive and supportive, uh, which was really cool to see because you don't see that. I mean, I just remember even um, going to a CrossFit event uh, initially and I was like into it and um, just like everybody gets into this really ultra competitive mode and they're trying to squash everybody. And like you even see, like I don't really see any elements of that, uh, that, that kind of a, a competitiveness uh, which no, was interesting. They were super supportive and, uh, it was a great event. Took a lot of prep. I was super nervous going into it. I don't know about you guys. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. No. Because it was our I first. I wasn't competing, so there wasn't really a reason for yeah. that. <laughs> I know. For reals, right? It was because it was our first event at our place. It's because Sal didn't want to clean the bathroom. There's a lot of, there's a lot of prep that goes into it. And I was just like, man, I wanted to, I wanted to make sure we, it, it ran smoothly. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, without a hitch, and it did. It ran real well. That big thing to Mike, mm-hmm. Salemi, and 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 Britt. you know what my favorite part was? What that they call it a sport? Mm-hmm. That it's called kettlebell sport. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's that's, not just it's not just kettle. Ooh. Yeah, it's just not kettlebell. It's not kettlebell. The answer to your health. Uh, and we, uh, you know, go further. The fact that they call it kettlebell to. sport is what I love the most about it because. Yeah. I really, it's accurate. I really loved CrossFit when I was first introduced to it. Not like I loved it because it's something that I would want to do on a regular basis, but because I was like, damn, this is like legit. If you know these athletes got to be badass yeah. to do this, so I had a lot of respect for somebody who had trained would have to train the body 
to go through what the CrossFit workouts are like. The problem I have with it is it doesn't say it should say CrossFit sport, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. just like kettlebell sport, because it is a sport. It's very cool to watch. It's very to see these guys do these 10 minute cycles. Dude, that is insane. Like, you get, yeah. Here's what it, I mean. Here's what it basically is. It's you're gnarly. doing you're doing a kettlebell snatch, one arm snatch uh, for 10 minutes straight. You can't, can't put, put it down. Yeah. You can switch hands, but you can't put it down. Uh, a complete rep is what they count, right? And some of these guys were using like 30, I think 30 yeah. kilo kettlebells, right? Weren't you they notice the difference between like when somebody had just like insanely awesome mechanics and like their their skill set was just awesome to watch because it was so fluid how easy they were just putting these numbers well, out. Well, we watched we watched 18-year uh, MLB pro Marlon Bird. Oh, he competed. Yeah. Get beat by a guy who weighed like about 120 pounds wet. Right. You know, with the same weight because his mechanics were yeah. were so freaking awesome, man. I mean, that you looked at Marlon Bird was massive, dude. Absolutely, and he did strong perform. And, and he, yeah, yeah, and he, he performed well. extremely. He did. He performed extremely well. I think. Did he get second? He got second place. Yeah, in the, he got in second. The wild card event. Yeah, he got second place, and he did incredible. I mean, he's a badass, no doubt. He and he's also only been doing the sport for a couple of years. They said right. So it was. It, he's just really good, and he was going against somebody who's like a ten-year vet. But that just goes to show you, like, it, I mean, the sport isn't an ultimate expression of mobility, endurance, and strength all combined. Like it's, mm-hmm. it really is. And so it's neat to see that. And so someone with really good mechanics, it was amazing to see how how much of a gap difference it was for somebody who was just learning, you know, made Which a big is a difference. big point though. This is, this is where, you know, I see like it's the ultimate expression of this skill that they've acquired over all these reps and sharpening and, and fine tuning that very specific swing and that style and everything, you know, that does uh, put you ahead of everybody else when you master it at that level. Right? Yeah. It's um, I mean, it's when you're seeing someone do a five minute set or a 10 minute set, and then you get to like the last, 30 seconds and they're shaking and their their body wants to break down but they keep going mm-hmm. it makes it um uh, just it's it's uh, exhilarating to watch right. and then you hear people cheering you know to keep to keep going we had a lot of first timers compete uh, a couple uh of our longtime uh fans uh jackie martinez competed mm-hmm. in her first event which was great to watch yeah her. shout out to jackie yeah, she, she well. kicked ass yeah. for sure she kicked ass and stephanie orbegozo one of our yeah. yep she was up there and we had two there was two little kids competing they didn't look any. One of the little boy didn't look like he was any older than like four or five years yeah. old. He was a little guy and he was doing the the kettlebell cycles. That was pretty awesome. He had a little I weight love, belt. I loved seeing that. Where do you yeah. find a weight the belt little, for tiny a little, little kid? Weight belt. <laughs> it was the cutest thing I ever seen. How about know, how ridiculous. about the guy pulled that out and actually could almost put that around Rochelle's waist? Oh, okay, she so she it. could actually get it around her waist and almost get it to the first loop, <laughs> and, and it was literally like this big. You know what I'm saying? That's wow. crazy. That means I could take my hands and actually touch both fingers yeah. all the way around the waist. That's yeah. crazy, it's crazy. But it was it was a lot of fun. Made a lot of good friends. Um, I'm excited to you know in the future get more involved with the sport. I hope we bring some some light to it. You know, people get more you know introduced to what it is and what it looks like in the community. Oh, so much. I mean, the I whole, see a lot of potential. Uh, well half said. the time I was I, I spent love that bottoms up press enjoying the show. The other half I spent like kind of taking notes on things to enhance the the viewership or enhance the experience right. of of uh, the spectator because it's not the most spectator friendly, especially, and that's not because the sport isn't awesome. It's because it's so it's so much in its infancy right now mm-hmm. that they haven't established. Like, no one's thinking right now. They're just thinking about how to make these cool events right. and compete and the competitors and what that experience is like. Well, now, how do you pull the crowd in? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like so they really we, haven't. We need to understand it at a, at a deeper level quickly. So yeah, there needs to be a way to kind of describe what's going on. Uh, and and really bring that crowd element into the sport. Well, I hope that that's something that we actually play a role in. I mean, now experiencing it, I think uh, we've all kind of challenged ourselves to kind of dive deeper into the sport, probably go to more events and check it out, and then from there find a way to make it more Mm spectator-friendly because, you know, right away I saw little things like, man, I wish I knew – you know, what level this person was at, what weight that kettlebell is. Like if I was watching, like there's times where you'll see two people right next to each other and you see the counter, right? Cause you see that in front of you mm-hmm. and someone's at 78, the other person's at 35. Well, in your head, you just assume the guy who's at 75 is winning, but it, he could potentially be doing half the weight the guy to the right of him is. And really it's the other way around. And so I think uh, showing that to the spectators and getting them so they can see that, I think will make it way more friendly to watch, you know? 
I do too. I think uh, it's got a lot of potential. Um, it's when you find a, a, a sport or something or some type of a anything, right, where you see a fan base with that kind of fervor um, and you know that 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 involvement and fanaticism. There's a lot of potential for growth. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, and you know going into it, I'm like, okay, I want to watch and see why people are so why they're com- it's a small community. It's a it's a small sport right now. But why are the people who do it so damn like into it, man? Like everybody's yeah. super, super into it. And having attended the event, um, I can tell you pretty conclusively now. There's a couple factors. Uh, number one, it is a test of will. It is you are watching someone who's for five or ten minutes, really just breaking mental barriers as they continue grinding through this particular movement. So that's when you watch it and you see it happening in front of you. You just you stand behind that person. So there's that. There's also the family feel of the community behind yeah. it where everybody's just so super supportive. Um, and I think that has a large play into it because a lot of the people we met will go to these kettlebell gyms and imagine going into a gym and learning how to work out or wanting to work out or learning the sport and you're in this like super supportive environment. Like that's a recipe for success. Another observation that I made that was pretty cool is anytime I meet an athlete from a sport that I'm not familiar with, I always look at their body to see like what areas are really developed or where I notice, you know, the strength or whatever. Like if you see power lifters or if you see, you know, a, a Olympic weightlifter or whatever, there's always, they have a kind of look to them, right? Kettlebell athletes have the strongest fucking hands I've ever shaken hands with. Like every one of them, yeah. you grab their hand and it was like a mitt, like mm-hmm. just a meaty, the girls even, like they grab your hands like, holy shit, mm-hmm. they've got strong hands. And when you watch these people swing a kettlebell, for 10 minutes, yeah. you know why. Yeah, you get it. You go, you know why. And there was that one dude, uh, I don't remember his name, the fucking- Dan? G- is it the, no, the giant- Oh, oh, the big, big dude. John. The guy who, was yeah. it John? I think it was John. Yeah, yeah. it is John. Super nice watching. guy. Yeah. Massive human. Yeah. The guy who won the bottoms up press, though. Dude, the bottoms up press. Oh, Dan? Yeah. To yeah. do a- and he's, what, he's, what was that, a 40 kilo kettlebell? He is uh, Instagram, if you want to check him muscle out. Muscle hipster? Yeah, muscle hipster yeah. is his- He's uh, not a huge guy. No. He's probably- well, He's good size, though. He's not small. But not, but he's, he's not small he's at all. He's strong, dude. No, Holy no, no. Shit. No, he's built, but he's not massive. Yeah. He's probably- How much would you guess he weighed? About 200 pounds, maybe? Oh, God, no, bro. He's Oh, he's 230. You think so? Oh, yeah, yeah. He's Really? Oh, yeah, no. He's he's a big boy. Yeah. He's not little at all. No, I don't think he's little, but I don't think he's massive. Oh yeah, no, he's pretty. I mean, big, well, I don't know what you thick. mean by massive. He's got some. But like, he's, he's about 225, 230 so? pounds at least. Yeah. But a yeah, forty nice. pound kettlebell upside down, strict yeah. press. Yeah. Very very hard to do. Kilo. That's kilo. kilo. Was, oh, excuse me. 40, yeah, 40 kilo. Yeah, sorry. He did. That was almost ninety pounds. It was like like 80, 80 something. It was almost ninety. Slappy for that. Sorry, <laughs> I, meant, I meant kilo. Sorry. That's right. Yeah. No, dude. I that speak was in the metro Yeah, zone. that was ninety, like ninety pound bottoms up press. That's ridiculous, dude. Yeah. He won five hundred bucks for and that. And he has an epic beard. Yeah. So makes I mean, it was cooler. fun to watch. Yeah. Makes yeah. him even cooler. Yeah. Bring it. Bring on the bird. Queen the ankle has landed. Quad. Today's Quad is being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking Quad. The eagle has landed. Quad. Our first question is from Glenn SPT. Do you think it's important to let post-workout inflammation take place? I love this question. This is a good question. This is good. So inflammation, yes. uh, we, we're all told it's super bad. It's like the, the, the root of all disease. Stop inf- inflammation at all costs because mm. inflammation will give you cancer, heart disease, you know, dementia, Alzheimer's. We basically, never have inflammation, right? Right. No, yeah. it's the, part of the muscle growth process. It is the right. inflammatory. The, the the process of inflammation, the the creation of inflammatory markers, is a very important system in the body. It's a very important signaling system in the body. Inflammation lets your body know that it needs to send, uh, repair, uh, rebuild, and repair chemicals and nutrients two targeted areas. So if I uh, work out my quads and zero inflama- the, the inflammatory process was completely eliminated, my body wouldn't have that signal to know to repair and rebuild my quadriceps. So it's, uh, it's a very, very important uh, part of the entire process. In fact, 
there's studies that have shown that when people take uh, really strong anti-inflammatories consistently or constantly when they work out, like you know ibuprofen or Aleve or any other other brand name NSAIDs, that they actually reduce their their adaptation from the exercise. So they're they don't build muscle as quickly, and over time, there's evidence to suggest that it increases the risk of further injury. Um, and you can see this even with more extreme forms of anti-inflammatory treatment like cor- uh, like cortisone shots. Mm-hmm. You know, when you go get a cortisone shot in your knee or whatever, the doctor will say, okay, I can only give you so many of these because it actually will, can cause degeneration uh, of, of that particular joint because those signals aren't there. And then on the flip side, uh, I'll, I'll use a very more, more specific example of uh, how inflammation can actually help the signaling process or is part of the signaling process. Arachidonic acid, which is a fatty acid found in red meat, in some studies is shown to, uh, because it is part of the inflammatory process, so if you have a lot of arachidonic acid, you'll get more inflammation. Well, in some cases, eating more arachidonic acid makes you build more muscle. Mm -hmm. So uh, inflammation is not all bad, and trying to stop it with like, you know, medications and stuff. Or icing. Here's, I I do want to talk about where it is important though and where it is okay and where you wouldn't want to uh, let it take its course where you would try and uh, bring down the inflammation immediately after a workout is if you are some sort of an athlete that Mm -hmm. needs to be performing like for example an NBA player who's playing four games a week so basically every other day he's having to run up and down the court his knees get inflamed and so that's the reason why you see them immediately put ice on it because at that point they're not looking for the 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 greatest adaptation process to build more muscle they're looking at we need to bring this inflammation the down the least amount of harm yes yeah. the least amount of harm and to not hinder his next game that he has to be in within a day you know so uh that's where there's kind of this exception the rule if you're the average person who is trying to just recover and build muscle and build and improve your performance you know letting that process happen naturally not trying to take any sort of pills or icing it like crazy you don't that's not uh as advantageous as it would be for like an athlete wouldn't you say justin yeah absolutely i was thinking that immediately especially from in football, let's say I was doing double days. I remember used to, that's when I actually would go into an ice bath and I would do that in between practices because it was just basically I was, I was trying to prevent any more, um, any more problematic, uh, stress to the, to the joints. And I'm trying, I was trying to preserve, uh, you know, all my tissue going into then the following day and then the day after that. So it was just a lot of, uh, a lot of trauma that I was applying to my body. So really it was just like, cause you don't have a choice. You're, pr- you're practicing and you're, you're playing in a sport yeah. that requires you to do double days or show up and play you're managing. Game yeah. For survival for like, you know, running at that high octane pace. So uh, yeah, in those situations it makes sense. Um, but yeah, like if you're trying to actually uh, overcome, you need, you need that stressor. That's that inflammation signal to then be able to, overcome the environment gets stronger so it is it plays an important role uh for strength building you know what it reminds me of so we know that antioxidants for example uh that eating a diet that's high in antioxidants can help reduce your risk of getting cancer right because antioxidants reduce oxidative stress oxidative stress can cause these change like free radicals can cause changes in your genes which then can cause problems with uh, you know getting cancer um, we, and so people think, oh, great. What I should do then is take high, super high doses of antioxidants, especially when I'm, I have cancer because that'll help kill cancer cells. Well, the opposite is actually true. If you take, uh, some studies show that taking super high doses of antioxidants actually strengthens cancer. Hmm. Um, and, uh, cause it, again, you're interrupting certain signals in the body that are necessary. They're there for a reason. Now, if they go, they, if they get out of hand, like if inflammation gets out of hand, that's when we have a problem. But really, it's the systemic inflammation that we're looking at, which has more to do with things like sleep and overuse and, and nutrition. But you know, a couple of things that uh, dampening the inflammatory response will do. If you try and dampen it too much, you dec- this is all proven by studies, you'll decrease protein synthesis. You can impair mitochondrial adaptation. They've shown this in mice. You can impair satellite cell increases. They've also shown this in mice. And you can alter glucose metabolism. So... 
what you're trying to do, and don't forget, when you exercise, what you're really trying, what you're doing, is you're sending a stress signal to the body, and that's why your body builds muscle and adapts. And what you're doing by taking medications that stop or prevent or dampen the inflama- inflammatory process is you're actually, uh, it's almost like you're, you're you're shooting yourself in the foot. Like I want to send this signal, but now I'm trying to stop the signal. It's like make up your mind, right? Yeah. You want to get the signal out there, so don't try to dampen the signal through some of these these acute measures like taking. Uh, medications, icing. You know, you got you were just using icing as an, as an example. Icing has been shown also to reduce the adaptation process, but again, maybe it helps you train harder and longer, and maybe that's the goal. Mm-hmm. So then in that case, then you probably should use it. In the long term, is it good for you? No, because in the long term, uh, you'll probably end up with more damage. So I would say, as far as inflammation is concerned, uh. If you want to optimize inflammation so that it does what it's supposed to, and so that it doesn't, you know, run amok, really look at things like sleep, undulate it, yeah. diet. Um, don't overtrain, and your inflammation will be more appropriate. Quick interruption by our sponsors, you guys. Lots of people have been asking us how they can support the Mind Pump Mafia family. Our first one is our Chimera Coffee that we love. You guys go to ChimeraCoffee.com. That's Chimera with a K for 10% off. Don't forget Mind Pump at the checkout. We also have our Big Top Beard Company.com for 33% off. Also, Mind Pump at the checkout. Checkout. Also, Brain FM. We talk so much about this for sleep and meditation. It's Brain.fm for 20% off. Also, Mind Pump at the checkout. You guys, we also talk a lot about books on here all the time. We're using that Audible. You guys can get a free trial, 30-day trial, plus one free audio book if you go to audibletrial.com forward slash mind pump. And then last, we get lots of people asking about Ben Greenfield's CBD supplement, so we hit him up to hook you guys up. You go to getnaturedblend.com forward slash mind pump for that discount. Our next question is from Lindsay Adair 23. The fat acceptance movement. Does it cause people to lose motivation to be healthier? That's a that's a great mm. one. Let's let's touch that third rail, shall we? Oh. Fatshaming.com. You know, I've so there's this This is the example of our the pendulum swinging one way then swinging the other way yeah. so far, you know what I'm saying? It was just typical. So, uh, so, here's the irony in this because I see this all the time. I have uh, there's friends of friends that I see will post lots of stuff in there. Friends of, I have a friend <laughs> and they're very they're they're really overweight. I'll use certain people's example obviously i'm not going to put them on blast but they're very overweight very unhealthy very nice people but they'll do all these posts about uh accepting themselves um and love their, their body love their body i love yeah. my body i love my body and which the message is great the words are great mm-hmm. but when i see what they're doing what they're really doing is they're trying to they don't love their body overcompensate they're, they're overcompensating they're putting it out there and if they really love their body they would take care of their body. Oh, so there's a thing about uh, that sinking. There's definitely you know don't hate yourself because you may be ma- making decisions that are making you overweight and unhealthy. Definitely don't hate yourself, but be honest with yourself and identify what's going on. And if you really love yourself, mm-hmm. then what ends up happening is you take care of yourself, you nourish yourself. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you had a child that was severely obese and overweight, you would still love them. But you would feed them in a way that would make them healthy. You wouldn't be like, oh my God, I love my child. They're so overweight. Here's some more cupcakes. Right. Here's some more. Please don't well, move. Please don't go outside. I agree with everything you're saying. And you know, let's take all that into account. But let's also remember that you know, obesity on, on some level is a sickness. Mm-hmm. And it's an expression of what's going on internally in your body that's promoting you know, this, this sort of response that... Um, you know, now, now I, you physically manifest, you know, the sickness, the sickness. And we're at a point now where it's like, um, it's so common that I feel like, um, for the most part, you know, all of our clothing options, you know, all of our food options, all these things revolve a little bit more around, you know, let's say I'm I'm feeding into this problem and, instead of like identifying it as a problem anymore, it's more of a, it's a standard that's become more prevalent. So, I mean, it's a hard conversation because yeah, like you said, a lot of people do want to love themselves and we want to love people that love themselves. You know, that's a great characteristic to have. Um, But you got to be real. You got to be real with yourself. Are you benefiting your body? Are you running optimally? Are you doing things that are promoting health internally? 
Um, so these are questions you should always ask well, yourself. This was the response to all the fat shaming, right? Yeah. Like the, I mean, we went. Which I get it. You, you, I mean, you're an asshole if you're going around calling people a bunch of fat asses, you know, or whatever. Right. So, and I think that that became this, that bullying mentality and fat shaming. And so here was a response like love your body. And then you had some celebrities get behind it. And they start promoting and talking about it. And then like anything else, it goes to the extreme. And that's what we're seeing now is you're seeing people. And I, you know, I know this from firsthand. I've trained hundreds of clients just like this. Like what Sal was explaining is they put this facade on like they're truly happy about their body and their physique. But in reality, that's really just a shield to protect them from what's going on emotionally. When you really start to dive in with a client like that, you find out they got all kinds of real insecurities and they've just learned how to, you know, use that as a protective shield is I'm going to put it out there and more power to them to feel for feeling comfortable like that. But they're still not addressing the root cause because like Sal said, you know, if you really loved yourself that much, you would want to nourish and take care of your body. And we're not talking about someone who's carrying a few extra pounds. Like, let's be honest here. This isn't, yeah. this isn't I'm like, glad you said that because yeah, this I is, know. there, there's, there's there, okay. First of all, the looking perfect uh, doesn't exist. Okay. No. Most people, you're not going to look perfect. People look different. We all come, we come in, in all shapes and sizes. What we're talking about is health versus unhealthy. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what I'm talking about. And when someone is unhealthy uh, and they say, no, I'm proud of the I'm proud of the way I look. I'm proud of my body. Um, well, uh, there it's not. I mean, first of all, it's not true. Uh, or maybe you are falsely proud, but you're not truly taking care of yourself and loving yourself, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Look, I do things that I'm not, you know, that are not good for me as well. Uh, I'm just honest with it. I'm not saying to myself, right. "Hey, I'm you know I'm I'm proud of uh, you know this unhealthy thing or this thing that I'm doing that's bad for me or this you know this bad uh, behavior that I have." Um, and that's the problem. And here's what I see the fat acceptance movement uh, go wrong in a big way. It becomes an identity. And so it's like, hey, you got a flat butt. You're skinny. Yeah. I'm better than you because I'm curvy or because I'm big or whatever or, or you know, love my, my body. My genetics already yeah. determined this for yeah, me. Or, or, you know, yeah. Or, you know, big people, you know, uh, I need meat on my bones. I don't want skinny, you know, skinny winnie or whatever. And they end up shaming fit people or skinny people. Mm -hmm. It becomes the opposite. Right. Like it's okay to talk shit about someone if they're too skinny now, instead of saying that someone may be too heavy. Now, if, uh, number one, it's not okay to talk about anybody that way. You, you shouldn't shame anybody for any reason. Mm -hmm. if someone wants to look a certain way, that's on you. But I think it's ridiculous to think you're being discriminated against when so, you go to buy a ticket on an airplane and they tell you, you got to buy two, two tickets because you don't fit in one chair. That's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> so it's I've had, reality. I've yeah. had clients like from the South that um, I've trained that were really overweight, like biggest loser overweight. And when they hired me, you know, we, you know, we'd be dropping the first, you know, 20 pounds down still, they got a long ways to go, but they've dropped 20 pounds, go home and visit their family and their family tease and make fun of her because mm -hmm. she's not eating more servings on the plate yeah. and calling her skinny. Yeah. And it's like they that, project their insecurities like oh, crazy on, on it, it, people that are trying to, you know, better themselves. I I had no idea that this would this yeah. happened yeah. until I started getting clients like very this. Common. It's very common because once I had it happen once, then I would know to ask about it uh -huh. to the rest of them. And it was, you know, nine times out of ten you know, they would confirm that, oh yeah, no, when I'm, because my whole family is big, my whole family is overweight. So if I carry Tupperware around or I'm exercising, they're making fun of me. Mm -hmm. And like, I think, whoa, how fucking hard. It's already hard to get yourself in shape, to discipline yourself, to do that, to make a change for yourself like that. Then when you're getting that, I mean, that's a tough one. It's a tough one. I, I remember years ago, I'll never forget, I went to a dinner so at the time, with uh, with my wife at the time, we went to one of her company dinners, and it's a tech company, and so we're at this this big event, and I'm sitting at a table with like, I don't remember, it was like eight people, and uh, one of the ladies there, I was talking to everybody, everybody was cool, and one of the ladies there was pretty, o very overweight, she was obese, she was over 300 pounds. Rotund. And uh, the bread comes out, right? So they're passing the bread around. So they pass the bread around, everybody takes some bread, and it comes to me. And I just, I don't take one and I just pass it over. Now, first of all, I kind of stick out a little bit going to this dinner because I come from fitness. And so in this world, people see me and they probably already knew what I did. So now here's this fitness trainer. He looks fit and he's not eating the bread. Immediately, this lady felt judged. Immediately, I could tell the look on her face like, oh, he's not going to have bread. Mm -hmm. But I didn't say anything. I was like, whatever. She made a couple comments. I didn't say anything. 
So then something else happened and I didn't have any of another dish or dessert. I didn't have dessert. And she goes, why didn't you eat uh, the bread or the dessert to me? And so I'm like, oh, well, actually, you know, uh, gluten kind of bothers me. That has dairy and that bothers me also. And so I don't eat those things. And I'm trying to be like, I don't want to, I don't want to go on the subject. Right. And she's like, oh, it's not because of the sugar or the carbs. I said, well, you know, now she's pushing me a little bit. Right. So I'm like, yeah, I don't like to eat too much sugar. It does. It's not really good for me. So I don't like to eat it. And she goes, you know, I had a friend who was just like you. So right away, I'm all right. Good. Oh, all right here fuck we you. Go. I had a friend just like you. Super fit. She ran marathons. She worked out all the time. She ate perfectly. And she died. And then she got cancer and she yeah. died at yeah. the age like of 48 years old. That, yeah. And she goes, you know, I decided after that happened, I'm just going to love and enjoy my life and do whatever I want because who cares? Because I could just, you know, die at any moment and whatever. And so, I'm, you know, and she's trying to make this big point. She got real passionate about it. And she goes, and, uh, insinuating that I, I hate my life. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. So I looked at her and I said, I said, no, you're absolutely right. I said, look, I, I don't know if on the way home today after this dinner, I get hit by a car and I die. I have no idea. I said, I don't eat a certain way and I don't move and exercise because I, I think it's going to make me live longer. I said, now, statistically, I, I probably will live longer if I do those things than if I don't, but I don't know what could happen. I said, I don't do them to live longer. I do them to live better. Yeah. I said, when I don't eat those foods and when I exercise the way I do, I can move better. I have more stamina. I have higher libido. I have better energy throughout the day. Mm-hmm. I can think better. I said, life is just more vibrant for me mm-hmm. because of those things. So really, it's about making my life better, not about making my life longer. And of course, the look on her face was like, oh, what the fuck do I say? And it's true because you'll hear people in this fat acceptance movement who are on the wrong side of it or using it wrong. And they'll say things like, I just want to enjoy my life and love my life. And the bottom line right, is- like eating healthy is not enjoying Well, the right? bottom, <laughs> yes. And not only that, but you know, if you're 300, and I'm not talking about your run of the mill, 10, 15 pounds overweight, whatever. We already talked about that. That's not a big deal. But if you're severely ob- obese and you're, you're, you're not, your life is not as enjoyable as it could be if you were healthy. It's just the bottom line. Whatever you enjoy doing, you enjoy going to the movies, you like walking at the park, you like playing video games. All of that is more enjoyable when you're healthy. Yeah. You like having sex. You like whatever. It's all more you enjoyable. Feel like you can get up and do things. That's right. So, really, it's about it's about living better, and the fat acceptance movement uh, is rooted in things I think that are good, but unfortunately, it's been taken in many way in for many cases to places that are bad, and it's not helping people. Yeah, I think it was pure, better. It, I think it was very pure. I think when it first started, it was the you know the counterculture to like the extreme the bodybuilding world. You know where yeah. we're judging you, and you have to be two percent body fat, and and that community and that mindset that's unrealistic for the average person to maintain. You know, day in and day out for the entire year. That's just not realistic for the average person. So I think this whole you know, counter to that was, uh, you know, the response to all the insecurities that came from that side of the of the fitness industry. I also think that now this is the opposite direction completely, and we probably need to be somewhere in the middle, right? We need, I think there's something to be said about accepting yourself and working through those insecurities of, you know, having to look a certain way. I know that it's something that I've continued to have to work on. Well, it's like you've accepted yourself, now better yourself. Right. You know, obviously that's the first step, you know, and I feel like that's important. You know, if they can focus on that, like I am who I am, you know, and I don't need everybody else to dictate that or tell me, you know, what I'm deficient in or, you know, like play off of my insecurities. I need to be comfortable in my own skin. Okay, great. And once you get there, now let's let's improve on that. Well, you know, let's not stop there. And I don't know about you guys, but I can I can say that I have a hundred percent success rate on people that were obese or this overweight, like we're talking about, that I got into shape, 100% of them have all said their life has improved. Their life is better. Yeah. You know, now maybe they didn't live longer, like Sal was saying, but that their day-to-day life, and it's crazy how much it bleeds into everything else, you know, what you do all day. And, you know, I remember when I went through and I re-watched the, the videos that I had made during my transformation, and I remember like not realizing that even the way I spoke was different. You could hear a change in my energy mm-hmm. just from the first video that I took of my when I was at, you know, just under 20% body fat. 
And then when you hear me when I got in really good shape and you could just hear, you could hear the energy in my voice. And it wasn't something I tried to do. I didn't even know I did it till yeah. I went back and watched it and I went, whoa, I sound depressed right there. It's just a completely different lifestyle. I mean, I've lived both, like even just coming from, um, you know, going in college, I was playing sports and I was like at a high level and I was working out constantly to then when I stopped college, I completely shut it off and I'm hanging out with these dudes and we were all, uh, I mean, they were, they're significantly overweight. Like I was like, some of my roommates were significantly overweight and just the lifestyle of it is revolves around, okay, what, what are we going, where are we going to eat? Cause eat was like the utmost important item of the day. And then after that, once you have that, it's like, you sit around, you watch TV, you, like you're literally not motivated to do shit. Mm. And I just could not stand it. It just, it, it, it ate at me. And it was just one of those things. I get it. You know, I get it. Once you get into the trap of it, it's like it, it, it consumes you. And then that thought process, you know, affects you. Now that all being said, uh, you know, you have to ask yourself, a lot of people get pissed off by this movement. A lot of fitness people will say, oh, the fat acceptance movement is fucking stupid. Like, you're fat. Like, get over it, man. Get in shape. Like, here's the thing. You got to ask yourself this question right here. Why does it piss you off? Why are you so angry that somebody is making this decision for themselves and is, you know, accepting, quote unquote, accepting their body, maybe in an unhealthy way. Maybe they're like what we're talking about where they're pretending like they love themselves or that they love their bodies when in fact they don't. But why does it piss you off? It shouldn't piss you off. I'll tell you why I think it pisses you off. Because you still haven't dealt with your own insecurities. Mm -hmm. You've done a good job of uh, you know, you know, structuring your life so that you can eat at the right time and eat the right macronutrients and you work out like a fanatic. But you're suffering from a similar condition to the obese person. The difference is you've be, you know, become addicted to exercise. Because well, right? you're so, hanging on a string. Yeah. So, right? don't, so here's the thing. Like, uh, leave, like, if somebody wants to be unhealthy, fine. They're not hurting you. Don't make fun of them. Don't talk shit to them. Like, let them live their life. That's okay. But on the flip side, if you're that person, do not, don't think you can force other people to uh, accept you uh, because you can't, and number one. And number two, don't believe, don't think that you can force businesses and stuff to accommodate for you because I don't, uh, the fact that, like, for example, I, I said earlier that airlines, you know, got sued because they would charge the price for two seats to someone who's really obese and they'd say they're being discriminated against. That's just plain bullshit. Well, this and that also makes my ticket go up because I'm paying for one and now I got to pay more because they got to give you a free ch chair because they're all of a sudden discriminating because you don't fit in the chair. Like, the fuck out of here. Yeah, no. I, I, this feeds right into the whole uh, psychological part too. I mean, like you said, uh, I this is something we just talked about where, you know, this is challenging, but when you get these state changes where you get angry or upset about something where you feel the need to express it like that, it's so hard for people to step outside and think, why does that make me feel that way? They're so focused on what that person is doing that makes them angry, upset. that They don't stop to think, why am I, why, why do I care so much? What, what is it bothering me so much? And we just talked about this on the episode. Like there's levels to that, to getting to, uh, you know, this ultimate self-awareness of being able to catch yourself in those moments and it's hard as fuck, but I tell you what, those are the those are the big growth moments when you catch yourself feeling so passionate about something that it makes you angry. And do you have that willpower to stop in your tracks, assess why you feel that way, and completely take the other person out of the scenario and go, what the fuck? Why does that create this type of feeling for me? And dive deep into that. That'll change your life, man. I swear to God, if you learn to do that. Next question is from Hassan M. Amun. Best way to recover from a large binge and the best way to prevent it from happening again. So I think first we need to define what an actual binge is. So it's not just eating something you're not supposed to. I've heard people say, oh, I binged on, you know, I binged yesterday. And I'm like, well, what'd you eat? Like two cookies. Okay, that's not really a binge. You just had two cookies. A binge is a little more out of control. Um, you know, rather I go to eat one cookie and end up eating the whole package. Yeah, as I say, it's more like that. Yeah, that's more of a binge. Now, a binge, we, we need to make sure we understand what's happening here before we even look at uh, preventing it. A binge is a symptom eruption, okay? It's, the reason why a binge occurred in the first place is because you are, uh, through tenacity, um, you're blocking a signal or a craving through sheer uh, will for a long enough period of time that when, the, when the, there's finally a crack 
uh, that which could it just mean, explodes. Which could mean one or two days for somebody. Yeah, right? <laughs> it just it just explodes. You know, it's like a, it's like a volcano building pressure, yeah. and you put a top on that volcano, and then it builds up and builds up and builds up, and then finally it blows its top. You see this with this can happen with food. It can happen with sex. You know, you've got people who abstain from sex and then have these eruptions and go crazy. Uh, gambling, and it drugs, gets all over the walls. <laughs> Uh, it can happen uh, with anything. So first off, uh, change the way you look at food and think about food and change the way you talk about it. So people who tend to have binge problems tend to look at food as things they can have and things they can't have. Right. I want to be very clear here. There is no food on earth you can't have. And there, it's all about foods you choose to not have. Change your vocabulary. So rather than saying... I can't have that cookie. Say to, and believe me, it makes a big difference. Say to yourself, I, I I choose to not have that cookie. I don't want that cookie. Uh, it makes a big difference because if you if you're in the mindset of can't, at some point you're going to have one, and now you've already broken that rule, and then yeah. you go crazy with it. So that's the that's the first thing I'd say. The second thing is, if you really desire something that badly. To where the only way you can prevent yourself from happen from having it is if you tell yourself you can't have it. Well, then you should have a little bit. Go have a little bit and tell yourself you can. I'm gonna have some of this. I, I choose to have a little bit of this. It'll prevent the big binges later on. And this is, I think, one of the reasons why IIFYM found so much success in, in people who followed the super strict, mm. regimented six meal a day, like same thing every day, because they found that if they allowed themselves to have a little bit here and there, that they didn't have these. These binges. Well, and this is probably, if you were to ask any of us, the one of the things we do like about the IIFYM is that part of it, right? Is that it is it is teaching people a better relationship than it is to go super strict, all clean food. There's clean foods and bad foods. Mm. And when you're eating bad foods, you're, you know, you're it's like this bad thing and then you end up binging. So as far as a response to uh, the the bodybuilding old school clean eating diet, it is definitely a, but that that's really where it ends. Right? No, right? you're right. Like it's, the the it's bodybuilding the first clean step. protocol, like it's a good like sort of transition from that. But like coming from somebody that has issues with cake and already binging, and then going into oh well, I could still incorporate this in a healthy diet. Like I see a lot of flaw in that. No, I see a lot of flaw in that. I also see a lot of flaw and issues with the cheat days, which is extremely yeah. popular uh, on social media. You see people have their Sunday cheat day or Friday cheat day or cheat meal or whatever. That's a structured symptom eruption. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're, you're, and I, and that was another thing that I saw really wrong with the the bodybuilding community when I was a part of it was. This is how the coaches actually coach the athletes. And I thought, man, this is this is such a, a, a poor way to teach these people how to eat is to teach them you eat like this, all structured. And then, you know, if if we're where if we're where we're supposed to be at, you look right or your weight's where it's supposed to be, I'll give you a cheat day. And you just are enforcing a really bad relationship. Treating people like dogs. You are. You're 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 training them incorrectly mm-hmm. and you're already in your working into already a very challenging situation for most trainers that they have to overcome when they get a client is teaching these good relationships with food. And now you're doing this whole cheat day and cheat meal and it's become extremely popular mm. uh, within the fitness community and I hate it. Now, let's say you've, you've done a bit. Let's say you've binged. You've had a binge. How do you recover from it? Step one, don't judge yourself for it. Right. Okay, because... Don't go the other extreme, right? No. Starve and cardio the next day, which is what a lot of people well, do. Well, because that leads to another Recognize binge. Recognize what led up to it. Right. So. Well, it leads yeah. to another binge. Like if I if I binge right now and I'm done and now I'm hating myself, I'm hating my life. Uh, I, I God, I can't believe I did that. I'm such an idiot. Okay, tomorrow I'm super strict. I'm going to work out so super hard. Again, I'm going to seal up that volcano again mm. and allow that pressure to build. And all it's going to do is it's going to promote another binge. So- First thing you do is don't judge yourself for it. It happened. I get it. No problem. Now moving forward, I'm just gonna be cool with myself. I'm not gonna. I'm not angry with myself. I'm gonna eat normal. I'm not gonna try and make up for it because trying to make up for it is horrible. It doesn't work. Your body doesn't work that way. Just go about your day. And if you feel like you really, really, really crave something, and you really want it, and you're like, you know what? I'm gonna have this whatever food. Allow yourself to have that food. Or if you don't want it. Don't tell yourself you can't have it. Literally say it out loud. I choose to not eat that food. I don't want that food. It changes everything, I promise you. 
I choo choo choose you. <laughs> What's that you guys from? ever see that book? I, no. you know, I know that there's a lot of different um, methods to helping somebody with this. Uh, what's worked really well for me and the clients that I've helped is we typically will take, I'll assess a diet where I tell them, you know, don't try and impress me, eat how you normally eat. And then we look at it together and I look at some of the things that could be causing the most problems, whether it be inflammation or too much weight or, you know, low energy, whatever the case may be. I'll look at that and then I'll give them other alternatives in replace of that. And then we'll try that one thing out and that's it. And then we're going to we're going to see how they and then we're going to assess how they feel. And then we'll take something else in their diet that is probably more optimal for them than a, a choice that they may be doing. And so I pick one thing at a time and introduce that or take it away from the diet and then together I'm asking, you know, and teaching them how to connect the dots with how they feel, how they sleep, how's their skin, how's their energy, how are their cravings, all these things and addressing it like that versus you're somebody who eats a ton of bad shit. And by bad, I mean things that are not optimal or super healthy for you. And those things are a bulk of your diet. And then you go, I'm going to go from this extreme to the other extreme. More often than not, that leads to binging. So one of the ways to help prevent it is, you know, slowly taking things out and then assessing how you feel and then learning to connect the dots to how your body feels from that not being in your diet versus taking it all at once and thinking that, oh, in order for me to feel and look this way, I got to eliminate all that stuff when it's not really like that. All right. Next question is from Bearded Iron 25. <laughs> if you could go back to any time in history, where would you go and who would you see? Oh, man. What? I, so many, so many times i could think that i would like to go back and, hmm. and meet but i I'll, I'll this is an easy one that would be super fun i would love to go back to the 1940s and 50s when resistance training with weights started to gain a little it was very cultish still but it gained a little bit of popularity and i would have loved to have worked out in some of those old school gyms with some of those old lifters like you know uh, john grimmick and some of those old guys and lifted with them and just seeing how I could do in the sport of strength and the impact I could make uh, back then. I think it would have been really, really cool to see just some of the information that they would have and their training methodology. I think it would have been really cool. Or even go back to the 70s and train with guys like Arnold, how, uh, the, the camaraderie that they had back then. That would have been, that would have been super fun also. Bring my, my current knowledge back then to blow everyone's mind. God, what? I don't know where... <laughs> You hey know, guys, I invented something. It's you'd called be like a superhero team. back yeah. then. I mean, I, I would love to go back and meet somebody like a you know a Marcus Aurelius or someone crazy like that, and sit down and listen to them just talk to you. But then again, I wouldn't want to be a part of that time or that era. Yeah, yeah. Um, so when I think <laughs> like it, oh you, you've got you'd an like infection, die. you yeah. have to cut your hand off. Yeah. yeah, so I don't I don't know if I'd yeah. want to be around that time. Although that's somebody who I think would be amazing to sit down and just listen to them speak, yeah. but. I, I, that whole pedophilia thing with I, you know that community. I've oh, always yeah. not yeah, very good, right? Yeah, not good. I've always had a thing for the the Roaring Twenties. I think that uh, the Twenties oh. and or the Fifties, I think, would be and uh, with the style, the way we dressed, we dressed so much sharper and we looked more presentable, and it just seemed like classy, a classy era and time to be a part of. So I would love to go back just for those silly reasons. You know what's funny too is if. If you think about it, like, because when you think of the 50s, that's what you think, right? Like, oh, cl sharp clothes. Yeah, it's and probably not a, yeah. <laughs> You know what we're thinking is we're thinking of the 50s, the way it was depicted uh, in Hollywood. media. Of course, because yeah. that's Cause all we go, have to go off you of. Go back to the real, you go back to the real 50s, I'm sure there was obviously more poverty. Yeah. People, you know, you know, women weren't treated very well. Just Minorities weren't treated very well. Yeah. yeah, it was probably a shitty like time, shit. right? Well, yeah. I think we all, I think we could all agree that we'd rather go forward in time than backward in time yeah. or stay in time than anything. Because I want to be older in the 80s. That's what I want to be. What do you mean? The, like, I want to go back, like, as old as I am now until like 1980. When, when like excess was hitting and all that cool <laughs> shit was going on. Right. You know, like the hair metal, you know. They had shitty cars yeah. though. Yeah, they, they did. It they was slow. But that's walk. why you drive like the, the cool old hot rods from 1950s. You yeah. Know, you soup them up. Yeah, dude, I could do that. And then, you know, Max Headstrom, you know, all that kind of shit. How it's cool awesome. would it, like, how cool Michael would it, Jackson. I would have I hit up every Michael Jackson uh, concert. Would I could. you really? 
Hell yeah. You like Michael Jackson? Dude, he's the best. Yeah. I would think I would think though in the roaring twenties when like alcohol is hitting the scene, like we we're seeing that kind of crazy the way it is with with uh, medical marijuana, right? And like the frenzy that's happening right now, uh, and just I can't imagine like and you're coming off the depression, right? So imagine like what a like a party scene that must have been like. I I, I can't help but think that had to have been pretty wild. Oh, dude, everybody's and doing coke and <laughs> exciting exciting <laughs> time driving and, Lambos and you know like you what the eighties? Yeah, man, they had the, <laughs> like Magna PI. I mean, everybody like, had a Rambo. helicopter. You know what I'm saying? Like like the, your guy, your best friend is a helicopter. <laughs> he follows you around an island. You know, like you just do a bunch of coke feel, and hookers. And, I feel like you're, you're talking about Miami Vice, the TV show. Yeah, <laughs> not like what I really, don't know. not what really happened. I is feel it? like that yeah, was hey, in the '80s. Hey, though. don't don't poo poo on our time in our era, just because yours is a little bit further in the future, and there was definitely a lot better technology. I don't know. I, I, I was like so young, I didn't appreciate it. It'd be, know? I think it'd be cool to go back and like meet like some of the most brilliant mind, like Leonardo da Vinci. Yeah. Like that guy would have been fucking yeah, awesome, right? He probably was way too. At crazy what point to though? He was like he was like a yeah. kid when he was doing some of his greatest work. I don't know, man. So think about like, that. Would you right? have a real like, conversation like, with yeah. him? He's probably like, nah, and, and I got all these thoughts. I'd like to go back. Leave and blow, me alone. You blow know? his mind. And be like, let me te- yeah. let me teach you about quantum physics. Like, <laughs> don't, don't you think someone like that too? From from my experience, uh, meeting some really really intelligent, brilliant minds. Uh, especially someone like that, an artist in like one one area, they're just so amazing, brilliant. He was probably a, he was probably terrible he was a to fucking, talk to. Oh, he's probably a fucking mess everywhere yeah. else. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He was probably, well, I hope couldn't so. hold the conversation. He was a brilliant artist, a brilliant scientist and philosopher. Jeez, what else could the guy do? Yeah, yeah. there's got to be. You got to be in. You got to have something else to give. He's probably right? hilarious, and you know, God, <laughs> this guy's got, got it all, the, man. All the chicks. Yeah, you, yeah. You know what? It would be, lady killer. You know, it would be cool. Maybe if I went. You know, it would be even cooler. It would be go, go back in time. And meet like your great grandfather or something like that. Now that to yeah. me that would be cool be for me. And I think if we've, someone brought this, actually, someone did bring this up a long time ago, and that's Whoa, I shared that'd my be trippy. I look just like my grandfather. I shared my father, be right? Weird. Because I didn't have that relationship. He he died when I was seven. So to go back and see him, you know, in his twenties and be able to meet him during that time, I think would be for me epic. Like yeah. so. Uh, and I would way rather do that than meet some famous person who I've read about in a history book or watched on TV, you know, a movie, a documentary about. So yeah. I think uh, every one of us would probably, if you really thought deeply about it, there's probably somebody in your family that you would, would rather go back and, and meet and get to hang out with because I think that in itself is is pretty neat to see this. It's neat to see, and I know you guys have to with kids. It's got to be so fascinating to look at them and see yourself in them. And then that has to trigger that, like, God, I wonder what my great grandfather and which one of your you know great 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 are you most like and did you have someone in your family tree that was like literally almost identical to you maybe person maybe not look wise but personality wise well, you know what's weird about mm-hmm. that is that when you're a kid i don't know if you guys did this but you know when i was a kid i really tried to identify strongly with my my dad because mm-hmm. he was my male role model right and i'm like god you know i want to be so much like my dad and so I thought that a lot of my traits were from my father's side, or at least I wanted them to be, right? Mm-hmm. And as I got older and more objective, I realized that a lot of my traits are from my mother's side. Mm-hmm. Like the wanting like to talk and express myself and you know, the charisma side. That's all my mom's side. Like my mom's side of the family, like I have my grandfather, my uncles, my aunt, like they're all salespeople, they're all communicators. I'm like <laughs> I'm more like they are than I am more like my dad's side. Right. Or sometimes you look at a picture and you're like, ooh, I look so much like my great grandfather, but he probably was nothing like you besides that. Right. Yeah. You never know, you know what I mean? Yeah. It would, it would be cool to go back in time to see who's, you know, who you're actually, it could be an aunt, you know what I mean? You go back in time like, I'm actually a lot like my aunt right. and nothing like the guys. Right. My, aunt, whole- my aunt in 1930 and how did she act? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What, was, what was going through her head during that time? I think that's cooler than actually going back ourselves or meeting, you know, or meeting well, somebody who we don't I want know. a DeLorean. Yeah. <laughs> I want to make this happen. I'd go just play the lottery. Yeah. Uh, we still got 30 days of coaching for free. It's still available. What? It's still for free. What? It's at mindpumpmedia.com. Also, check us out on Instagram. Mind Pump Media on Instagram. That's where you can ask us these questions that we can answer on these episodes. Don't forget to hashtag qua. We also have our own Instagram pages that we uh, share awesome information, cool fitness tips, cool fashion tips, and sexy shirtless poses. Sexy glute. Uh, <laughs> clapping. <I don't> <laughs> That's on Justin's page yeah. at Mind Pump Justin. Come, coming your way. My page is Mind Pump Sal, yeah. and Adam is Mind Pump Adam. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. 
If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. <laughs>